Hi, it's uh, Kevin May in the Focus Wise studio. We're joined again yes. because we met last year. We Jeff Sakasigaro, you're the. Uh, Tell us again what the title is, because it's yeah. an unusual one, isn't it? It is, yeah. The title is Trust and Safety Architect. Okay. Um, how you can decipher the tech jargon is uh, you can think of me as a subject matter expert and on fraud and compliance related matters. So try to help out our customers or hopefully potential customers with those types of issues. Okay. Well, we were delighted that you joined us last year in Los Angeles. Um, but this year you're talking about an inverted commas dynamic friction. That's right. So give us your definition of what dynamic friction is. Absolutely, so dynamic friction is using the thoughtful application of friction. By that I mean, uh, SIFT wants to help customers understand you know, trusted or non-trustworthy events on their platforms yep. and treat them in kind. So you can change the experience you deliver to your positive customers because again, they're good, they should get the good experience, but fraudsters should get the exact opposite, all right? So that's where actually we want to apply friction appropriately, but for legitimate traveler, let them go about their business. Okay, so how do you apply friction? Great question. So um, there's a myriad of different ways. Um, I think through uh, one example people are familiar with with financial institutions is like, hey, did you mean to log in? Was this you? Uh, did you mean to send this money across? Okay, yes, second yes, verification, no. that kind of stuff. Exactly right. So you can do that in an automated fashion there. Um, some of our clients like to do an identity verification, you know, send in a government doc, things like that. So. Again, um, something you can serve to a customer to verify them in real time and then get them on their way. Right, so you know, we're here at Focus Rise about travel rather than a, a financial community or something like that. Absolutely. So, that, that's, um, so what are you throwing in, for example, that like you just mentioned there, like government documentation. So if you, if, say if I'm a hotelier, mm -hmm. would you do the same kind of friction, if we define friction in that way, what would you do to me if I was a, a, a bad one, as it were? Yeah, great question. So. Oftentimes you want to increase the amount of friction where it becomes less economically viable for the fraudsters, right? Oftentimes right. they can be a little lazy by trade. They're trying to find the easiest <laughs> way in, right? Um, like how can I quickly can I exploit a company? So um, what we tend to do or sometimes suggest with a fraudy population is put up multiple uh, friction points. So it could be um, IDs rather heavy, especially from a hotel perspective. But maybe, um, hey, we actually just need you to verify your booking with someone on our staff. You know, if you can contact us, we just have a few questions. Um, you know, is this the right room? Things like that. So you kind of um, get them offline, you know, um, contact that way where maybe they're a little less comfortable in committing the fraud. And you know, we've, we've done some work with you uh, editorially and we spoke last year. And one of the things that we did specifically was around account takeovers. Yes. Is that the certainly with relation to all these people here, is that perhaps the number one kind of type of fraud that they are experiencing here still? Yeah, especially within the last year, we've seen tremendous growth in that sector. Um, I think a perfect reason to say why is um, a lot of people in the travel industry are working beyond their original, original remit. So, you know, if I was working in hotels or uh, car sharing services, et cetera, a lot of these companies are offering ancillary services, you know, beyond, you know, putting yeah. packages together. So um, now you're working with third parties, points that have, you know, like fiat value. And oftentimes taking over an account allows you to either purchase those experiences or yep. electronics, things like that. Okay. So um, I, I think we may have mentioned this before. I'm curious if it's changed in the last year. Airlines, hotels, OTA, is one more susceptible to these kind of fraudulent attacks than another? Great question. Um, I would say OTAs we work with a lot. We tend to see them uh, requiring help, um, sometimes from a hotel or an airline perspective. Like for an airline, like I have to go through physical security at an airport, provide some documentation. So oftentimes there are other checks there which may work fraudsters out of the situation. Okay. And hotels, you know, you can certainly like, from a hotel tonight perspective, you can book relatively short, but oftentimes there's a little longer time to delivery. Right, okay. Um, so sometimes it can be less susceptible, but I think everyone faces their own challenges. Okay. And so we've had account takeovers, so there are other elements of fraud, there are other types of fraud that we've also written about. Absolutely. So after account takeovers, which is one of the other ones that the people here in this room are, uh, again, susceptible to? 
Yep. Uh, I think something everyone's accustomed to is traditional payment fraud, right? So yeah. I want to pay for this inventory, but not with my uh, actual credit card. Um, something we're helping a lot of customers with now is actually uh, ratings and reviews, right? So not that I have a listing about a hotel, about my stay. A lot of those can be cre uh, created uh, in a spammy fashion or just like disingenuous. Okay. So we try to weed out the fraudulent reviews and ratings from those that are from legitimate travelers. You said, it's interesting, I noted it down here, you said they're lazy by trade fraudster. Mm -hmm. They're lazy, but they're really smart. Correct. So do you... Do you have to, as a company, how, how do you try and stay one step ahead of them? Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing um, where SIFT is a little, we're difficult on ourselves, is uh, we're always striving to be better. Well, we're never satisfied right. with what we're working on. So um, even though something works today, like in the moment as we're talking, yep. um, that may not be true five minutes from now. Yeah. So we're always trying to look for new features. Um, how quickly can we turn our learnings around to our customers? to make sure they get the most up-to-date insights and benefits from that. So yeah, it's, it's like selfishly, like never being satisfied and making sure our customers get the benefit from that lack of satisfaction. Is there, um, uh, last question really, I mean, looking ahead, like a couple of years, is it still going to be account takeovers and those kind of things that are going to be the key things that we should be worried about? Or is there some other kind of type of fraud that we haven't quite fully defined yet? Yeah, um, one thing that kind of keeps me up at night, depending on how conspiratorial you want to get, is um, a lot of e-commerce is moving towards voice recognition. Like, right. hey, um, I need some paper towels, add it to my shopping list. Um, so in a world in which voice is a stronger component or maybe some kind of video context, I'm interested to see how fraud prevention vendors, SIFT or otherwise, help uh, secure those types of environments if that becomes the purchasing behavior. So if you can purchase something with your voice, but you can mimic someone else's voice. Yes. I'm not, I'm not gonna suggest that we try and do each other's yeah. accents. So <laughs> no. It might be quite amusing, but, <laughs> but is it that, could it be that simple that if I could, if I could yeah. do an impression of you, I could, yeah, so um, that's... Yeah, you see all those deep fake videos now, right? Where you can actually see the face, uh, use the audio yeah. uh, represented. And it's really tough for a, 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 you know, an average consumer to differentiate between that. And I expect for merchants or you know any business, it may be similarly challenging. Okay, Jeff, uh, so nice to see you again. Thanks Good so much for joining us. Thank you.